Hey friends, it's Miss Kiana. Um, today I'm going to be reading Birdie by Janelle Cannon. Um, and if you see um, or hear anything, it's just my puppies, Gizmo and Greta. On a small tropical island, the sun rose high above the steamy jungle. A mother python was sending her hatchlings out into the forest the way all mother pythons do. Grow up big and green, as green as the tree's leaves, she called her little yellow babies as they happily scattered among the trees. But Bertie dawdled. He was proudly eyeing his bright yellow skin. He especially liked the bold stripes that zigzagged down his back. Why the hurry to grow up big and green, he wondered. Maybe some of the older snakes in the jungle could tell him. Bertie ventured out into the treetops to look for them. Umbles, Aggie, and Ribbon were lazing on some branches nearby. Verdi peered at their droopy green bodies. It's not polite to stare, chided Aggie. Umbles burped and groaned. It's taken nearly four weeks for that last lizard to digest. You surely do like lizards, but lizards don't like me. Why don't lizards like you? asked Verdi. Don't interrupt, Umbles grumbled. Dear me, whined Aggie, if I don't shed soon, this itchy skin will drive me bananas. Verdi tapped the tune with his tail as he waited to speak. Stop that, Verdi, it makes me nervous, Ribbon complained. Besides, you'll never grow up to be properly green, always interrupting and constantly fidgeting. Verdi couldn't imagine being in such a hurry to be like them, and he really wanted to keep his sporty stripes. Hoping to find snakes that weren't so boring, Verdi slipped away. Hi, Gizmo. Hi. Dozer was snoring in a tree not far from the others. Hello, said Verdi. Do you want to climb trees with me? I'm tired, Dozer growled. Go do a few laps around the jungle, okay? Verdi's heart sank. The greens were not only lazy and boring, they were rude. At the top of a very tall tree, Verdi gripped one branch with his tail and another with his little snake jaws. I will never be lazy, boring, or green, he thought. I will jump and climb and keep moving so fast that I will stay yellow and striped forever. Then Bertie let go. From a distance, the Greens watched. Oh my, they chorused. Ribbon shook his head. At this rate, he'll be lucky to make it to his first molt. Aggie nodded. He's likely to put an eye out on a branch. Umbles moaned. He may not live to turn green. But one day, Verdi's skin began to peel, revealing a pale green stripe stretching along his whole body. Cack! He gasped. How can this be? I'm the speediest snake in the jungle and I'm still turning green. He raced down to the river, grabbing up a mouthful of rough leaves. Bertie flung himself into the water. If I can't run this green off, I'll scrub it off, he thought. His frantic splashing caught the eye of a large bottom feeder cruising the murky depths. Yum, the old fish hummed. Lunch. Before the fish could haul Verdi under, the frightened snake bit him on the nose. Ah, uh, poof, 
with the blast of his rubbery lips, the great fish sneezed, sending Bertie into the air. Slapping onto the soggy shore, Bertie skidded out of reach. Whew, that was close, he sputtered. Every inch of his body was covered with wet, gloppy mud. Hmm, kind of lumpy, kind of brown. Sure beats being green. He left the mud on. But the soft brown muck dried into a hard gray shell and Bertie could barely move. If he even budged, the stuff cracked off in jagged chunks. As each piece fell away, Bertie could see that his body was even greener than before. This is terrible, cried Bertie. He pictured himself hanging around in droopy loops, itching and complaining and worrying all day like the old greens. He looked up into the sky where the sun blazed a beautiful yellow, just the color he used to be. Then he pulled a vine to the top of the trees. Launching himself from the treetop, Bertie startled a flock of colorful birds. He became dizzy with delight, sure the bright sun and his lofty speed would turn him golden again. In his joy, Bertie forgot that he would fall back to earth. Whippity whappity flip flap wham plummeting through the trees, Bertie landed in a crooked sprawl across the log on the forest floor. He couldn't move. Help he croaked. As usual, the Greens had been watching Bertie's antics. They moved quickly to where he lay. Didn't we say you would come to this? Umble said, shaking his head. Aggie sighed. Lucky thing, he's still got two good eyes. They gently lifted Bertie up to a safer place where they could watch over him while he healed. Neatly splinted to a branch, Bertie had no choice but to listen to the greens as they gabbed. Remember how I used to streak across the forest floor, Ribbon asked. Quick as lightning, answered Aggie, and I climbed giant trees like they were nothing. They grew taller then, you know. The things I dared to run down and swallow, Umbles bragged. Wild boar were no match for me. Bertie was astonished. You used to run and climb and hunt giant pigs? What happened? Ribbon crashed. Just like you, Aggie replied. I took a terrible fall and almost put an eye out. Then, old Umble here near, nearly choked to death. Now we all prefer the quiet life. A warm perch, a little sunshine, and an occasional good meal. The Greens rambled on about their days of glory, and Bertie settled in on his branch. Finally, one afternoon, Umble said, looks like you are ready to go again. He carefully untied Bertie from the branch. You're welcome to come with us, said Aggie. Ribbon agreed. The three greens slipped quietly back into the forest. Bertie wasn't ready to join them. He wasn't sure where he wanted to go, so he just stretched and stayed put until the sun went down. He listened to the forest come alive. Time passed. The sun and moon took turns in the sky. Verdi marveled as the full moon grew thinner every night. Then he watched patiently as it slowly grew round again. He wondered why he hadn't noticed that before. Verdi became so green that he blended perfectly with the leaves. He was so still that other creatures walked right by without seeing him.
One fine morning as Verdi basked in the sunshine, two small yellow snakes approached. They tapped and fidgeted as they stared. Get a load of that old green guy, one of them whispered. Do you think he ever moves? The other snickered. I seriously doubt it. They're just like I used to be, thought Verdi, and now I'm what I was afraid to be. He looked at his big green body and slowly smiled. How would you like to climb trees with me? He asked. With you? The yellows were astounded. I'll even show you my fancy figure eight, Verdi replied, though he was a little worried about putting his eye out. With practice, the three snakes performed a perfect triple figure eight, leaping and looping with his little striped friends. Verdi laughed. I may be big and very green, but I'm still me. The end. I hope you like this book. Um, this is one of Michelle and I's favorite books and our pre-k class really loved, loves this. Um, have a good day.